Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is present, everyone. Welcome back for a little bit more SPTV, where every day is a great day not to be in a cult. Guys, we're here to talk today about Tom Cruise's Scientology auditing sessions being secretly recorded by order of David Miscavige without Tom Cruise's knowledge. Not only without his knowledge, but specifically against his will, against his specific request not to be recorded. This also applies to Lisa Marie Presley. Claire Headley spoke about this earlier this week in an interview that she did on her channel with her husband, Mark Headley. If you're a regular view of my channel, you almost certainly already know who Mark and Claire are. Their channel is called Blown for Good. Claire and Mark Headley both spent an awful lot of years working directly under David Miscavige, working at Scientology's International Base, working for Golden Era Productions. And on Claire and Mark's channel, they are doing a series um, about where is Shelly Miscavige. And this week, Mark interviewed Claire herself. Now, the reason why we're talking about Shelly Miscavige in relation to Tom Cruise is one of Shelly Miscavige's uh, main duties was to oversee the handling and the auditing of Scientology's most famous celebrities. And it was while Claire was telling uh, some of the stories of her involvement with Shelly on her channel this week that this issue came up. It was discussed of Tom Cruise being recorded against, uh, without his knowledge, without his consent, against his consent, actually. And also Lisa Marie Presley's auditing sessions being monitored in real time without her knowledge. Now, earlier today on another channel that I want to highlight for you, and that channel is Our Scientology Story stories peeling the onion. Now that channel is hosted by Mark Fisher and Janice Gillum Grady, both of whom spent a lot of years working at Scientology's international base as well. Now Janice Gillum Grady herself worked directly under and directly for L. Ron Hubbard himself for something like 12 years or 14 years. Uh, she also spent a whole bunch of years working under David Miscavige. Mark Fisher spent a whole bunch of years working directly for David Miscavige. The stories and the interviews that they uh, that they publish, that they tell on their channel are incredible. I highly suggest you go over there and subscribe to their channel. Today, they had a brief chat with Claire Headley where they asked her about this issue of Lisa Marie Presley's auditing sessions and Tom Cruise's auditing sessions being monitored uh, without their knowledge and against their consent. Let's check this out. I mean, I had heard that, you know, they put in, you know, cameras in, in auditing rooms after we left and all that. But I didn't know that they had them set up. And you did you say that RTC was listening next door when Lisa Marie Presley was being audited or sec checked or whatever? Yeah. They actually were sitting there listening next door. Yep, live. I, I, that blew my mind. And then were the reports <laughs> then going up to Miss Gavage or whoever was was uh, wanted the information? Yep, Shelley would call into that next door office periodically to get updates and reports as to what was happening and. Um, you know, my role was um, just examiner for Lisa Marie. So in other words, simple terms, at the end of each counseling session, I had to go into that room and she would hold the cans and I would look at the, the needle on the, on the lie detector and say, thank you, your needle is floating or whatever. <laughs> uh, but it was funny, I ran into Lisa Marie um, after that. Yeah. When I was in Clearwater, Florida in 1996, when I was there training to be a religious technology center representative, and I got in the elevator and she was there and she looked at me and she's like, oh, hey, you're the examiner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, she remembers me. Hey. <laughs> That's wild. That's kind of you know, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't know why any celebrity let alone any Scientologist would ever pick up the cans and think that anything was private. I mean, we knew there was knowledge reports written up when you were being sec checked and all that, but that's a whole nother ball game when you've got video and audio of the person actually saying the things that they're confessing to. And I don't know who, who would ever pick up the cans. It's just crazy. Yeah, I know. I know. And then, then you told the story too, that Tom Cruise, he goes, I don't want to be on camera. So then they just moved him to another room where there was a hidden camera behind a, a frame photograph, right? And they, yeah. they videotaped him anyway. Yeah, and actually, you just reminded me, Marty Rathbun was his counselor at the time, and Marty was actually kind of fighting Shelly on it, like, hey, if he's saying he doesn't want to be recorded, we should honor that. And it was like, nope, he's, gonna, he's getting recorded. 
You know what's amazing is when, when Scientology was banned in Victoria in 1965, one of the reasons was because they were gathering blackmail material on people in their PC folders. And this just takes it a whole nother level. Yes, it definitely does. Wow. So there you go. So what's interesting there when Tom, so Tom Cruise does seem to be aware that the normal auditing room, the auditing environment is under surveillance is being audio recorded and video recorded because otherwise there would have been no reason for Tom to say, I don't want to be recorded. And then, so he specifically moved into a room that Tom believes is not being recorded. And yet it is. Now, it does make one wonder what someone like Tom Cruise, who by this point had already had a ton of Scientology auditing, was used to spilling his guts to Scientology auditors, clearly seemed to understand that the majority of auditing sessions are, are being you know video recorded, audio recorded. It does make one wonder, what is it that Tom Cruise planned on discussing in that auditing session that he told one of the most senior people in Scientology, I do not want to be recorded for this auditing session. I don't know the answer. I'm just saying it does kind of make you wonder. And one of the reasons, one of, the, one of my biggest takeaways from this anecdote is the fact that when you have, when you look at this Tom Cruise, David Miscavige relationship, one of the questions that does come up is like, who is it in this relationship that looks up to who? And I don't mean physically looks up because that would obviously be David Miscavige. He's the shortest cult leader um, in the world. Uh, he looks up to Tom Cruise uh, in a physical sense. And yet in the relationship, I think it's becoming more and more obvious that it is Tom Cruise who looks up to David Miscavige. I do not believe that Tom Cruise would dare ignore a suggestion or advice or a request from David Miscavige. And yet David Miscavige seems to think so lowly of Tom Cruise, despite being, by all accounts, his actual best friend in the world, thinks so lowly of him, has such little respect for him, so little regard for his wishes, that he would outright ignore a request, a simple request to not be recorded. Despite the fact that Marty Rathbun, who was auditing Tom Cruise at this time, was one of David Miscavige's own most trusted lieutenants. And that simple request of just, hey, just don't record this auditing session. That was too much for Dave. Now, I know in this story, it's, it's Shelly who said, no, we're recording him anyway. But Shelly's acting on orders of Dave. I think this anecdote does show how little regard David Miscavige has for Tom Cruise. Not because of anything to do with Tom, but because David Miscavige has such little regard for everyone that even his best friend is not worthy of having a simple request honored. A simple request that had to do with privacy, that just had to do with a feeling of security. No, not even that request could be honored. This anecdote also goes to show that nothing in a Scientology auditing session is sacred or confidential. This will not come as news to anyone who's worked on the technical lines in a Scientology organization as a staff member or a Sea Org member, but it might come as news to an awful lot of Scientology public. I don't know. I, I admit I don't have a lot of perspective on this. I've never been a Scientology public. I was always a staff member or a Sea Org member. From the age of 12 to the age of 26, I was a full-time staff member for Scientology. It's easy for me to assume that the things I knew and believed must be the same things that public Scientologists knew and believed. But over and over again, I find out that that, that my assumptions uh, in this regard are, are not true. <laughs> so it's easy for me to assume Tom Cruise must know this, Tom Cruise must know that, Tom Cruise must know uh, what David Miscavige is really like. I think we are learning over, you were hearing, we're learning over and over again that Tom Cruise only knows the version of David Miscavige that David Miscavige has decided to, to put on display for Tom Cruise. I don't think Tom Cruise does know the real David Miscavige. I don't think Tom Cruise does know that David Miscavige ignored a simple request to please don't record this auditing session. That's my biggest takeaway from this anecdote. I'm curious to know what your biggest takeaway is. Let me know in the comments down below. And please go over and subscribe to Mark and Janice's channel at Our Scientology Stories, Peeling the Onion. And if you haven't already, definitely go over and subscribe to Mark Headley and Claire Headley's channel, Blown for Good. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks to everyone who watches until the very end. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, yeah,
then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right